Hi, welcome back to our video lecture and rhythm practice. Last time we talked about key signatures. Remember, a key signature shows up after our clef and in between the clef and the time signature. It changes certain notes throughout a piece of music. Now, if we look at this example again, like we did last time, we have a concert B flat major scale. This is what it looks like if we wrote it out in treble clef and in bass clef, and they place the, the flat in front of the notes that are supposed to be flat, which is B flat and E flat, because the B flat major scale only has two flats. Then when we apply the key signature, we see it right here, and we are supposed to remember that all the Bs are flat and all the Es are flat. And you'll see this in treble clef with the flat on the B flat line and the flat on the E flat space or the E space. And over here in bass clef, you will see a flat on the B line and a flat on the E space, indicating that those notes are flat all the way through. Let's go to our next slide. Now, remember we talked about orders of flats and sharps. Now, this helps us remember how many flats and sharps are in a key signature or a scale. And we read them from left to right. And this will be very important to memorize in the future. And we also last time talked about the circle of fifths. And this way actually is um, fifths. So if we think about the C scale, C major scale, concert C major, and we spell the scale C, D, E, F, G. G is the fifth note in that scale. And so that's how we arrive at the next note around this circle. And that's the reason why it's called the circle of fifths is because we're going every fifth note in the next scale. So the fifth note of a C major scale is G. The fifth note of a G major scale is D. And if we were to go backwards, counterclockwise, we would call this the circle of fourths. And that is um, the handout that you have in your band binder. I given you the circle written going the other way. And so if we spell out C major, concert C major scale, C, D, E, F, F becomes the fourth note of that scale. And so the pattern continues that way in fourths. So we spell out the notes in an F major scale, F, G, A, B flat becomes the fourth note of an F major scale. So that's the pattern for fourths, and this way is the pattern for fifths. And here's our order of flats and sharps right here as a reminder. And remember, um, this circle tells us how many flats are in each scale. So if we look at the key of concert C major, there's zero flats or zero sharps. And if we look at F major, concert F major, there's one flat. Concert B flat, there's two flats. And how do we know which flats are, what, what the one flat is? Well, we, that's why we need to know the order of flats. When there's only one flat, then we start with the beginning of the order. And that would be B flat. If there's two flats, like in concert B flat major, we have to start with the order again, one, two. So now we know that it's B flat and E flat. Now we can do this with um, sharp keys, but we have to know the order of sharps, which is the exact opposite or backwards order. See the pattern there? And so we 
Look at concert G major. It says there's one sharp. So we go to our order of sharps. What's the first one in the order? F sharp. So that is the one sharp in that scale. And the pattern continues throughout the circle. And this is a good way to determine which notes are flat and which notes are sharp. And you memorize how many flats or sharps in are each uh, scale. Uh, eventually you will memorize them all. Let's talk about Divisi. Now you'll see these uh, parts where notes are stacked on top of each other and it'll be abbreviated uh, with the marking DIV. And then usually when the music goes back to single notes, it'll be marked UNIS. Now, this is the part of the book where they introduce Divisi parts. Now this tells us that uh, one part of the section can play the top, the top notes, or the other part of the section can play the bottom notes. And then when it goes uh, to unison, that means everybody plays the same notes again. Here's a breakdown of eighth notes. Now, in a measure of 4-4, four, four, we have four beats. One, two, three, four. And this example shows four quarter notes. Now, if we think about eighth notes, eighth notes, we're splitting these quarter notes in half evenly. And then we have two eighth notes in each beat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be eight eighth notes in a measure of four, four. One and two and three and four and. So they're worth half a beat. And if you add them together, that's one full count. So uh, remember, these are eighth notes with flags and then when we beam them together this is or connect them together this is called a beam slur a curved line that connects two or more notes of a different pitch or different pitches so this is when we just tongue the first note and use our air and buttons to play the next note and you do that anytime you see a curved line over different notes Pickup note is an important concept because we have a full measure of four beats, but sometimes at the beginning of a piece of music, there'll be a partial measure. A note that comes before the first full measure of a piece of music is called a pickup note. And so this is uh, one single quarter note, and that tells us that this is beat four. So if I were to count this off, one, two, <gasps> four one three four and the music will be played like that kind of like the way i sing it and here's a reminder about an accidental which is either flat sharps or natural signs and this is the flat accidental and remember it lowers the note a half step okay and here is another reminder of key signatures let's go on Dotted half notes. A dot after a note adds half the value of the note. And we're talking about dotted half notes, so we have a two beats, and half a two is one, so that dot means that we're adding one beat to that two beats. So then this is what it looks like here. Two plus one equals three counts. So we hold those dotted half notes out for full three counts time signature changes and this is when the book introduces three four time so there'll be three beats in each measure one two three one two three one two three one two three so that means that there's three counts in each measure quarter note still gets one count dynamics that means uh dynamics tells us whether to play loud or soft. And forte is abbreviated with this fancy F, and that means to play loud. Piano is abbreviated with this little P, and that means to play soft. 
natural sine. So a natural sine cancels out a flat or sharp, and it remains in effect for the rest of the measure. But when we go to the next measure, that's it. We're back to playing what's in the key signature. So if you had a B flat in your key signature, and then the, all of a sudden there's a natural sign in front of that B, they want you they want you to play a B natural. And then if you see any Bs after that in the next measure, they go back to B flat. Accents. They look like these less than signs, or I like to think of them as alligator mouths, and they go on top of the note. And it means attack the note a little bit louder. You'll actually play it three-fourths of the value. First and second endings. You play the piece of music until you get to the repeat sign. You go back to the beginning. And since you played that part of the music in the bracket that says one, the second time you skip that and you play the bracket that says two, and it either ends there or you keep going and play the rest of the music. And then a one measure repeat sign. It looks like a percent symbol. And it just means uh, to repeat the measure that came before it. And this is uh, in your book right around where you start playing that piece, Ferrajaka. Okay. And that's all I got for you. Let's get to practicing rhythms. Hi, welcome back to Rhythm Practice with Mr. Layton. Get ready to play. We're going to do these rhythms on a concert B flat. We're playing one single note and playing these rhythms on just that note. And we're practicing our rhythm reading. So in this exercise, we will be seeing quarter notes, half notes, and dotted half notes. We'll also be seeing dotted quarter note and eighth note rhythms and uh, just your good old eighth notes. So be careful of these rests too because they're going to be uh, eighth note rests in there as well. You always want to look ahead with your eyes when you're reading the music, especially in rhythm exercises like this. And we'll be going from 4-4 four, four time signature and at the end, there'll be a 2-4 time signature. So be careful of that. Always look ahead. When you're playing the measure you're playing, look to the next measure. I'm going to get started. And you'll hear a two-measure count off. And then I'll start playing on a concert B-flat. And that's the whole exercise. I'll try to make these rhythm charts that I played along with for you today and the last video available for you. I'll, I'll, um, I'll add a link.
so that you can download it as a PDF. And if you want to print it out, you can. If uh, you can't, then just keep on reading along this or use it as a device to read the rhythm. Okay? I hope you're out there staying he uh, healthy and safe and that you keep on practicing. All right, happy practicing. See you in the next video.